Hello. So in this class of voice over IP, today we will study about the VoIP architecture. We will see that what are the various components uh, here in this architecture with the help of which we can achieve this VoIP communication here. Now, like we have various uh, IP networks or service providers. So these components will be here with these service providers. Yes. Now, we just see here for the VoIP architecture, just let's consider that we have these different networks here like this is your uh, IP network so this is service provider one here then the service provider 2 and then the service provider 3 here. Now, what are the various components here with these? Uh, with this one network, like this is considered this is one network of your web system by one service provider here. So, like we have call agents or your and with this the SIP server here then we will have here like the next component as the media server here then we have application server then the service broker Then here we have we will have the edge routers here and the other components Like we have here the bandwidth manager here. Then again, here we will have the edge routers now this network here uh, should be like uh, connected to the user end so for that like we have access concentrators and like your access gateways here then We have the subscriber gateways. Then we can have the customer premises equipment or the various routers here. And then like your SIP phones or your IP PBX here. So same uh, such kind of things or we can say components here will be with the service provider 2 and the service provider 3 here. Now we have this connection or 
has like connectivity to the PSTN network also, which is your public switch telephone network here, which is which will have your like some. You can say that for example, it has class five switch here. Now this PSTN here is connected to or will access the services or you can say that we are making call from VoIP service to a phone to a normal PSTN. So it has to be connected here. So for that it has here protocols that will be connecting or that will be running here to connect these entities here. So we have signaling gateway and your trunking gateway and if here this trunking gateway is connected to this so it has this ss7 protocol here and this call agent this is how it will be connected to your PSTN network and there are different protocols which are running here to access the services or to provide the services here like protocols running between these edges like media gateway protocols and your RTP protocols all these things here so this will be here or this is an overview here for your wiper architecture that what will be the various components here so we can like make calls from this one service provider to another service provider also or to another service provider also that means your wipe to wipe communication here but rather than that it can be extended to the pst network calls that means you can call from this network to this PSTN system. So for that we require this trunking gateway and the signaling gateway. So we will study all of these components here and after that we will study the various protocols here like different protocols for your media gateways and signaling gateways which is enabling this communication here. So we will study all of these components here one by one. Now we can see that here like this is the service provider one here. So it supports like your IP phones or your IPPBX using SIP and then other components like your access gateways, etc. Then it has protocols like edge point uh, 248 here, which supports this communication here. Then we can have this like service provider 2 here. So it can act as here exchange carrier between this and this. We can have this connectivity like similarly, so many of the service provider networks. Now after that, we will study the various network components here. So the very first component is your call agent here. The call agent here is located in this service provider's network. So what it, it, it does, the function of call agent is that it provides call logic or we can say that the call agent here provides call control functions. It here provides your call control functions that means it is responsible here to maintain or to see the every call state in its network so the call agent here will be responsible for all the call controlling functions in this particular network in this service providers network now it can include uh, supplementary services also like your caller id or your call waiting now it provides the call control functions and it also participates in the signaling between the uh, phones and device uh, control flows like that means like controlling the terminating or forwarding the messages that means whatever the function here it is required to uh, set up a call here or to see all the call how it is established 
that means it has to control the various protocols and the other devices also so basically all these components here are also referred as a soft switch in your wipe system together this is also known as a soft switch because it is maintaining or it is uh, performing here the various call control activities here like signaling between two phones like this is ip phone 1 and ip phone 2 so it will be maintaining the signaling between that terminating and forwarding the messages between them here so it is also called a soft switch as we said now above that this call agent also gives the details of each call to support the billing that means it, uh, it call has been established here so it provides it has a support for billing also now what will happen if we see here what call agent will do now this is an ip phone here so it is dialing a number it's want to make a call so what will happen the call agent receives the digits it will receive the digits dialed by phone or by the user here then after that when it receives that phone number or that digit it has to identify it has to identify that to which destination or to which extension it belongs. It identifies that to which destination extension it belongs. I have dialed a number. It will go to collagen and it will identify that what is the destination. What is the destination extension to which it belongs. Now, after the destination is identified, what will happen? The call agent sends information to that extension. Now, after identification, it sends info to that extension now if the destination is registered to the call agent then what will happen the call agent will instruct the phone instrument to send the ring out of that ring buzzer so that means identification after identification is done then it will find out that yes it is registered after that it will uh, instruct to ring now after the rings are played and when the destination party or destination person answers the phone what will happen your call agent here will uh, instruct the phone to send the voice traffic that means when it instructs and when the user receives your voice traffic is being exchanged between the two phones so this is the central processor here for your system so this is the function for your call agent now next we have sip server or your sip proxy Now, SIP. SIP is your session initiation protocol. Now, this SIP protocol is a, com is a very important uh, communication protocol for uh, signaling and controlling the multimedia communication. So the most common applications for this uh, protocol is like your IP telephony. So SIP server, we can say that is a very important component of this IP PBX or your IP exchange here. So what it does, now this is signaling. This is responsible for the initiation of your sessions and termination of your session. So this SIP server here mainly deals with the setup of calls. It deals with the setup of SIP calls in the network. Now, it only handles the call setup and call tear down. This component here is only responsible for setting up and 
the release or tear down of the call it is not actually transmitting or receiving anything this is only your signaling and controlling device controlling mechanism here so it will handle that what request has been made what root request had been made so it will authenticate and authorize that particular service for the user after that it will initiate that session for your call here now after sfa server we also have sip client here so sip client is basically the one which originates or terminates the sip signaling that means wants the services originate it and when don't want the services it will terminate it so this is the client and this is the server and then we have the call agent so we have today just started here about that this is the a scenario here for your voip architecture and the various components so we just have started about call agent your sip server and sip client we'll study the next nodes of your voip architecture in the upcoming classes so this is all here for today thank you so much